November 25th, 2018. Start at the beginning. Sign. What we cannot speak of adequately, we shall remain silent. What we cannot speak of, we shall be silent. Ludwig Wittgenstein, Austrian philosopher, Cambridge in the 20s, 1920s, almost 100 years ago. Ludwig died in the early 50s, throat cancer. He was a big smoker and had lived on an island for eight years that you could only row a boat to get to. He had to stay away. I understand. When you're a lighthouse tender, you'll get it. Winter's five months long. The helicopter only stops once a month. Unless you need them. And you never know when you're going to need the Coast Guard. Pun intended. So I'm going to start at the beginning. Like those of you who messaged me, asked or said or stated a couple on YouTube. Now I've already deleted and I'm starting fresh today. It's always good to have a new start. So uh, start at the beginning. I'm like, well, there was a big bang. And there was a superpower involved. A divinity. We're mortals. But we have a soul that's divine. That will live on after life. Personal self-consciousness survives death. We know. I'm going to dedicate this broadcast and all the rest to my mom and dad. Jetta and Jim. Dad in particular. You've been on my mind, man. We're doing all right. You know this. You knew it when you left me here. It's all right, man. Pop was right about one thing for me. Keep riding. Keep lecturing. It all come together and you can do anything you want. He was right, but he saw the gifts in me that were instilled by them and allowed me to culminate it my own way. Free thinking is everything. Start at the beginning, I've been told. Start at the beginning. Philosophy, philo, friend, sophos, wisdom. Philosophy translates as a friend of wisdom. That doesn't mean you own wisdom or have possession of it. That means you attain to wisdom on a higher level of perfection, just like you would virtue or any other thing we do in life. Hopefully. Wisdom can't be owned. It can only be used. What we cannot speak of adequately, we shall remain silent. Ludwig Wittgenstein, Austrian philosopher, 1920s in Cambridge, England. Main professors that got uh, Ludwig into the university based on his Tractatus, which is his most famous work where he says, what we cannot speak of, we shall remain silent, was Bertrand Russell, who was the driving force. Many of you have heard of Bertrand Russell one of the logical positivists, and the other one was G.E. Moore, who was the co-chair of the department at the time, but Moore and Wittgenstein could never get along. They awarded Wittgenstein a Ph.D. just based on the Tractatus. It's barely 150 pages long, not even. It's a short book. And uh, when they got into a discussion, the three of them, Moore said things to Wittgenstein about mysticism and poetry and philosophy not being always the best in mathematics because Ludwig was a mathematician. And he's telling us to stay silent. Sign. It's perfect today, Sunday. A time of meditation. There are things in life in mysticism, metaphysical things, things outside reality, to some, some of us see, 
You can too. We all see it becomes, do you want to, do you want to use your head or do you want it to be passive? So how's it all work out? Well, when Wittgenstein tells us what we cannot speak of, we shall remain silent. Overall, he's telling us it's the words we use. It's about the language we use that creates distance from us and the universe. When we speak about things, we create distance. So the minute language gets used, it's inadequate. The Greeks had multiple words for love. Philo was the love of a friend, right? Sophos, right? Wisdom, mm -hmm. it connects up to love. Telos, love of a family member, love, romantic love. All these different words for love. They got a shorter alphabet than us. And we got one word. I love women, I love chili dogs, and I love my car. How's that fit? Well, hopefully it's adequate in the frame you're using it in with whoever you're talking to, and usually we know. But the reality is language clouds what we do. And if we look to the theory of knowledge in humans before language, and as it developed, we start to see something very unique that people can communicate on a lot of levels above vocal. And sometimes I forget this as I walk through till a pretty girl comes up and hugs me that I know, or maybe not if it's a lucky day. And then I'm like, damn, hi, mm, reality. What's it all mean? Every one of you is a philosopher too. We'd never get anything done creatively if we weren't. It doesn't matter what your field of study is, what your field of work. It could be medicine or law or philosophy or engineering. Any of it. It's all about creativity. And without creativity, we'd never push forward. We'd never make it. But we got to talk about it on the way. On the Way to Language. It's the title of a book. On the Way to Language from Martin Heidegger. I don't have my copy laying here. Martin Heidegger's On the Way to Language. He explains it very well with respect to the phenomenology of spirit, as Hegel's notes, you know. And of course, Kierkegaard said it first. He called it double reflection instead of phenomenology. And Kierkegaard and Hegel lived in the same time, but they never seemed to talk course, you know, and uh, so Kierkegaard's the first existentialist, and he's the number one anyway. He was a Lutheran minister who had a woman in love with him for seven years that he denied. He said he couldn't serve two masters, woman and God. He spent the rest of his life heartbroken and died early in his 30s. You never want to deny what's yours or what can be or what you want. But more than that, it's about language. It's about spirituality. It's about how we talk about things and it creates distance the minute we open our mouths. When I was an undergrad, I remember I wrote a paper about riding a roller coaster with one of my friends and how that we could get on and not say a word and get off the roller coaster at the end and look at each other and know exactly what we wanted to do. We wanted to ride it again. Or maybe stop and get little roses in the middle and try not to, you know, freak out in the hot sun. And you get to be 18, you can add beer into the equation. It can get fun quick. It can also get ugly quicker, I think. Nonetheless, we can feel each other without talking. And when we do talk, it makes it ever so clear, especially in structure. But when you see through language and you see its ability to screw us up because we think we know what we're talking about and we know the meaning of language. We're making a mistake. And Wittgenstein would say this, if two people are standing talking and you walk up to them, you might be able to listen to them for a half a minute or whatever, you know, and figure out what they're talking about or figure out what they're saying. But the truth is, Wittgenstein says, you don't know their language game. You're not part of their language game. 
So when people are engaged, reality becomes it. For me, reality walks along beside. You got to reflect as you walk through. It's the only way. And Wittgenstein's right. Language not only clouds our world, and I'm going to talk about this a lot in the future, language and the problems of language and ontologies and the theories of knowledge, epistemology. But the reality is it's all we got. So we got to make it as adequate as we can. That's what the logical positivists I spoke of earlier wanted to do. And Wittgenstein wasn't so interested in that, but they wanted to make language like mathematics so it would be universal. This theory works really well till you get to a place like Portugal where there's like 15 dialects of Portuguese in just Portugal. 15 dialects that are different. But more than that, it's not just about language covering the underpinnings of being when we talk. It's about metaphysics, mysticism, the idea of God, the things that can't be put into words that have to be understood by yourself, by one, by your individual self and will. It's about all the things that can't be described adequately in the universe, the things we can't put to math or science directly. As Einstein said, you know, the, the things that will always be explored because of the human condition. The thing is, it's never too late to become an explorer. It can go on the whole way through. And there will be people get in the way. There will be people who are envious because you know yourself. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes a messenger has to come along and remind us of the link up to humanity through the divinity on earth under the chaos of nature. Wildfires, chaos of nature owning us all the way. Only rational beings could see the smallness of democratic and republican arguments. 1,000 people go missing and many, many die and everybody loses everything. And you mismanage your forest humanistically. And nature reminds you, we are stewards of nature as humans. When we talk, we get distance. More than that, even religion itself contains your personal view of God. God is way bigger than most understand. But you can figure it out. Never stop. The contemplation of existence is the being of life. Humans, animals, plants, rocks, right down to the sand. It's all there for us. And we're stewards of nature who have to keep it going. Keep it protected. Hope you have a good Sunday. Take care of yourselves. Peace.